The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the Ju June, the uh, January. We'll, we'll get to June pretty soon. But today is the January 26th edition. This is the uh, terrific, uh, this is a wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 8 o'clock in the morning. That's right. If you listen at the normal time, it is 107. Thanks so much for doing that. We'll try to make the show as pertinent as we can for you. But if you are listening live, we would love to hear from you. So a couple ways to do that. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send it early. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. And, of course, in our Tigers, then, well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We've got U.S. equity futures trading higher. The uh, Nasdaq's up by 2%. That's 298 points. The uh, Dow equity future, 1.1%, 381 points there. The ES mini, 1.5%, 65 points. Russell's up uh, 31 points. That's 1.5%. So we've got a rally going on. We're going to go try to figure out what that means. If we take a look at what went on overseas last night in Asia, a bit of a mixed bag. You had the uh, Shanghai up 23 points. We'll figure out what that means. The Nikkei down 120 and the Hang Seng up 46. Uh, over in Europe this morning, you've got the uh, DAX up 2.5%. That's a big move. It gapped up. It's actually confirming a buy the D point, 374 points right now to the upside. And the FTSE is up uh, one and three quarters percent or 128 bucks. Silver's off seven. I'm sorry. Silver's up two pennies, but lights we, I'm lights we, gold is off seven bucks. And lights we crude is up a buck 14, trade out at 86.74. Our 30 year treasury, what's it doing? Four ticks to the downside, 155.04. So let's do this here just as the quick synopsis as to what's going on inside of the markets. We'll just look at our nine panel. What I use is my nine panel market update chart to do at the uh, top of the hour. Typically and uh, this gives us a, a decent feel for what's taking place. So if you take a look at the ES mini, the upper left-hand side, it confirmed a buy the D point. It did that when it generated, and that generated that bullish hammer candle a couple of days ago. So all A to B equals CD patterns. I'll put the pattern in here right now for you. All A to B equals CD patterns have a number of different potential outcomes. For example, there's the one-to-one -one at 4504. Just imagine if you had just bought that one-to-one -one A to B equals CD and gotten shellacked out there. Well, price moves down below that to the 1.272, moves down below the 1.618 level or to the 1.618, gets all the way down to the two level. But that itself doesn't matter which level it got to. The key is... You need to see a bullish reversal candle. And you got that a couple of days ago. You've actually got that going on right now, but the day is not over. So we've got confirmed bottoms there. In the case of the spot volatility, it made its high, did it with a shooting star candle. Seems to be working, but it's somewhat questionable. But look, as long as the spot volatility remains above that blue line, that's 2139, that's a 50 day exponential moving average, it's always dangerous. Or what I would say is any surprises, uh, no, would be no surprise to see a big rug pull in the ES mini out there different story if price gets below that 50 day we're a long ways away from that the nq just like the es that has a confirmed by the d point generated that uh, hammer candle a couple of days ago price right now is uh, now the the uh now, I won't say this. I'll, I'll, I'll wait till we take a look at some other charts out there with regard to the NQ. If you take a look at the U.S. dollar index right now, so it's trading above. So it generated a uh, Gartley buy pattern. It did it back here when it uh, generated this uh, bullish engulfing candle, bull sash candle back on January the 14th. 
So there was an A to B equals CD to the downside. Price above the top of the daily profile, we're trying to figure out where is resistance. Well, resistance happens to be, or it appears it happens to be, the top of the monthly profile. So 96.11 is the number to watch there. If price closes above that, of course, it's a monthly profile. If it closes above it on a daily basis, it may or may not have meaning, but that's the resistance level. If we take a look at Goldilocks, it's in an A to B equals CD to the upside. The initial price projection, 18.61. Doesn't mean that it will stop there. Could move up to the 18.83 level. And as long as price remains above 18.30, that's the top of the daily profile, and it's a swing point, the B point of the A to B equals CD, then a continued move higher is likely. In the case of silver, price right now did form a new profile a couple of days ago. And uh, when it formed that profile, I take that back. So when it formed that profile, price was got right back inside that the, the top of that profile. So Right now, the key level here for silver is going to be 2392. You're 2394 right now. If price can close above 2392, it's A to B equals CD to the upside should continue with its next price projection being about 2529. Light sweet crude, you can see it's trading right into resistance as well. The top of its profile, 8710. We're trading at 8690. So watch the 8710 level. Natural gas, and it's chilly. It's been cold down here in Florida. I imagine it's been cold all across the most, at least the Midwest and the North and the East. And, uh, so natural gas is uh, trying to find its mojo out here. We're looking at the March contract, but you can see price is trading really into at least two resistance levels, the descending trend line area and the top of its profile. A close above $4.12, we're at 414 right now, would be a positive, but really what price needs to close above in order to really get some mojo going here, I would say would be the high from January 12th. And that level is $4.35 out there. With regard to the 30-year treasury, not doing much out here, not doing much at all. Uh, it's just uh, consolidating with inside its daily profile, support at 153.18, resistance 156.28. So there's the overview of what's going on inside the markets. Now, let's start digging down inside. Um, you know, well, I tell you what, uh, let's go do this here. Give me a moment. What we want to do is actually get a read for what's going on internationally. Or I'd like to share with you what is going on internationally. I gave you the numbers, but now let's actually go see what do those numbers actually mean out here. We'll do that. We'll switch over and take a look at um, – this is a set of charts here that uh, – we start off with uh, with subscribers each day just to try to understand what the markets are communicating to us. Sort of a one world market out here. And so and what today is especially important because we're looking for clues, right? Today is all about clues. Now, if I was doing the one to two o'clock show, that would even be more fun because we'd be in the hour prep right before the Fed releases its numbers out there. So the clues between one and two are going to be different perhaps than they are at 8.13 in the morning out there. But nonetheless, we're searching for clues out here. And if we're looking for clues coming from the international markets, here's what we know about the Shanghai. The Shanghai has pulled all the way back. So it forms a TD9 count top. It does this on the trading day of, uh, what is that day? It looks like uh, December 13th. A to B equals CD to the downside. If it were to generate a bullish reversal candle, much like the U.S. markets, it would generate a buy the D point. Hasn't done that, but price did find its footings at its breakout level, its second breakout level of 3601.80. So as long as price can hold that level, this could be signaling to move up to its oscillator and change line. That's at the 3691 level. The Hang Seng out here has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. The A to B point uh, goes from here to about here. And then that means I'll just take this uh, leg over. I'll just take that leg. I'll just take that line over. And here's the A to B equals CD for the Hang Seng. So price should be really targeting its breakdown level of 25,414 out there. You can see that the last two days, price has tested, rejected, a screen oscillator and change line after changing colors. That's a normal behavior. That pattern is what you and I will go take a look at that as it applies to the U.S. equity futures contracts as soon as we get back from this break. The Anike might form a TD9 count bottom between tomorrow and Monday. And there's that gap up in the uh, DAX confirming it's a buy the deep. We'll be right back. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. 
Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we're looking for clues out here, treasure hunters, so to speak. And uh, so just before we leave these sets of charts out here, the Shanghai has tested and held support, suggesting a move to its oscillator and change line. The Hang Seng already has a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. Its oscillator and change line changes colors. When it does that, we usually see price pull back and test that level. Now, it went from red to green. That is a bullish test. As long as price remains above that oscillator and change line, 24207, price should then go ahead and fulfill that move to the upside, that A to B equals CD, with the significant resistance at 25,414. The Nikkei is likely to form a TD9 count bottom pattern over the course of the next few days. Price has to at least uh, tick below this morning's low in order to do that. And that has to occur between uh, tomorrow, that would be what, uh, Thursday, Friday, or um, Monday out there. The case of the DAX, it had gapped up. This gap up, there's an A to B equals CD to the downside, much like our uh, equity markets that we look at, our equity future contracts out here. So that gap up uh, suggests that's a bullish reversal candle. That suggests a move to about the 15,636 level. Price can close above that, then it talks about a further rally. Now, the FTSE has a green oscillator and change line. And it did have a sell the D point pattern. Price never got back to its breakout level. So it's, uh, it's, it's suggesting to you and I it's pretty strong. Big wide ranging bar today. But the question is, what does price do as it gets to that 7521 level? If price can get above that, then that tells us the FTSE should make its run back for its prior highs out there. And if it doesn't, well, then that could be the end of its move. In the case of the US dollar index, uh, this has got the uh, Gartley buy pattern. You can see that bullish engulfing candle. Um, this suggests that price should move higher. But you and I know that the US dollar index is also dealing with resistance. That resistance was the top of the monthly profile. And that number was 96.11. The euro, it's trading below its red oscillator and change line, tells us we have a falling price oscillator below zero. That's bearish and suggests lower price. The uh, Japanese yen, uh, formed a, a Rosemontum indicator top, took price right back to its breakout level, 113.55. Nobody Nobody, at least within the TNN, uh, TFNN community, would have chosen 113.55 as a breakout. That includes me. 
That was until we developed uh, and we uh, automated the uh, TD9 counts and utilized those breakdown and breakdown levels. Really important, really extraordinary. If you don't know that pattern, just subscribe to Mastering Probability. Do it for at least 29 days. It doesn't cost you anything. And uh, you'll have an extraordinary tool for the rest of your life. Now, the case of the yen, it should go target its oscillator and change line. That's in the 114 area. So I just wanted to make sure we reviewed that. So what's the summary here? Summary here is these charts, at least internationally, they're suggesting that they want higher price. So just kind of put that in the uh, quill, so to speak, out there. Uh, let's go from this set of charts. Let's go back to our black. Oh, uh, no. Let's do this. Let's uh, let me stay on that. Let me do this here. Sorry about that. Uh, what I want to do is just put up a different set of charts. And that uh, set of charts are going to be, we, we typically look at this, the four uh, equity future contract charts, the daily time frames with the uh, white background. So it's got my Ninja Trader and all my tools on here. So, you know, you can if you look at the ESENQ, the Dow, the Russell 2000, you'll see all bullish reversal candles. Hammer candles for the first three, the Russell 2000 had a bull sash candle out there. Now, what the Russell also did, yes, so that was a buy the D point. Now, they don't have the A to B equal CD or lightning bolt patterns drawn in here, but you can visually see them and you know they exist we've we've taken a look at them and the case of the russell 2000 has two bottom patterns out here it has a td9 count that confirmed yesterday so it's got two but price here should target its oscillator and change line of 2055 if price can get above that or close above that it could make a run to 2152 to 2180 that is the uh, sell zone because it did form a new bearish structure daily profile so 2055 is its key nut you want to watch this um you know certainly at the end of the day if price is above that that's a signal that price wants to move higher if price just trades up to that and it closes right there well then it hasn't uh, that that could be the end of a counter trend rally out here in the case of the nq which has a buy the d point pattern its counter trend rally could or should end at its oscillator and change line that's about 14862 if price get above that, it continues to move higher. In the case of the ES Mini, the ES Mini's oscillator and change line, just as the Dow, so we're looking at the left-hand panel charts, you'll see that both of those OULs changed colors about four or five days ago out here. Just like we looked at inside the Hang Seng, and I can't tell you why this works. I just know it's a phenomena that works out there and you pay attention to it. Now, in this case here, their oscillator and change lines went from green to red. If price just gets up and tests those levels, and it should, at least those are the signals coming from the bottoming patterns that we have on the daily time frame for all four equity future contracts, what we see going on across the globe out here, price should be able to, and, and knowing that those oscillator and change line have changed colors and what that typically leads to, the tell to me should be that price should be able to make that move. Make that move up to 35001 for the Dow. Make that move up to the 4509 level for the ES Mini. Now, if price tests and rejects that and moves lower, that should be the end of the rally. That would be where the next sell zone would take place. And if price closes above those levels, well, then that would not be its message. So what would be its message? Well, that's kind of interesting because overnight we had a new development. That new development was a confirmation of profiles out here. And those confirmation of profiles, we already kind of discussed the Russell 2000. What we didn't discuss was the profile profile in the Dow equity future contract, which is not on that white background chart, but it is on these black background charts. I'm just simply going to expand this out. Now, the new profile that completed yesterday or formed yesterday, very wide, 2,687 points from the bottom, 33, 366 to the top, 36054. Now, here is where this is really kind of interesting out here. So, so by the way, uh, what I did was I went back to 2007. Um, just because, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a, so we're 222 right now. So 2007, so a bunch of years out here. During that time period, uh, this is the third largest profile that has ever formed inside the Dow Equity Future contract in terms of points. Not in terms of percentage, meaning percentage, uh, but but it's a very large profile out there. Now, I, I, I started looking at that late last night, just didn't have the energy to, because I'm trying to figure out what does that mean. Um, out here. And, and and what I really mean by that, so there's a couple of different things with regard to this profile. The first thing that I would ask you to notice is that the bottom of this profile is below the bottom of the other one. Okay, perfect. But the top of this new profile is above the prior top. And this is a signal of a consolidation. So the message there is we have a large consolidation, not just a consolidation with inside this profile, but that in essence is the message that is providing to you and I. So that is kind of interesting out here. Now, my experience is if price can close above the center of a bullish structured profile, that's what we have here. We'll take a look at the Dow Equity Future contract. That really increases the odds of price being able to make its way to the top. However, 
the only way that that is really going to come to fruition is if price, and I'll just pull this white background chart over here, is if the Dow equity future contract can close above that red oscillator and change line out there. So that number is going to change. You can see it change on your screen right now. It's in the 35,000 area. You know, as price gets up to that level, it's probably around 35,015, somewhere around there. But the, whatever that number is, if price is able to close above that level, well, then what we're looking at out here is that move could, in fact, take us to the top of that profile. Profile, and that is in the 36054 level. So that's the message of the daily time frame charts. The ES mini, uh, it has not formed a new profile. So there's nothing there for you and I to discuss, but it too should target that 4509 ish area. That is the uh, top, of, or that is the oscillator and change line. And if price can close above that, well, then its message right now until a new profile would form would be the target would become 4643 out there. So if you're looking for tells, it doesn't matter whether it's 126 or 826 in the morning right now, uh, these are suggesting higher price. So what we're going to do from here is we're going to go take a dive down into those 30-minute time frame charts, see what kind of signals it's generating for us. And we'll just take this stuff one step at a time. I'm loving this uh, step right here at 826 in the morning, being with you bright and early. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Welcome back, now, folks. And one of our generous Chuck the Tigers name was talking about retracement levels for the Dow, the daily time frame for that Dow equity future contract. And, and yes, 
price is at that 0.382 retracement level. It's a, a little bit above it. So interestingly enough, um, if you take a look at yesterday's action, uh, Tucker, uh, we already had the retracement levels because we had established uh, with that buy the D point pattern, the hammer candle that formed on the uh, trading day of uh, January 24th, a couple days ago. So we had the high to the low. And yesterday's high out there was at that 0.382 retracement level. I mean, really almost right to the tick. That high yesterday, 34.472, and I've got 34.482 as a 0.382 retracement area. And that's typically where people get off the elevator. But people are back on the elevator right now. So, again, what you and I are trying to do here, what I'm at least trying to do for you, is trying to provide you with clues. What are the clues that the market is generating for? So once you get above the 0.382 retracement level, this would suggest the next move would be to the 0.618 area, 35,380. But you and I know that is more of a rendezvous at the 007, 35,007-ish area. That's because that's what it's printing right now. That's not the number that will hit. Uh, but that is the uh, next really rendezvous out there. Now, to confirm that as well, whether that's a likely outcome out here, we'll go take a look at the uh, short-term time frame charts. And for the short-term time frame charts, I'm just going to focus on, at least right now, the 30-minute charts. And on the 30-minute charts here, what I want you to notice is that uh, inside the ES Mini, there is a TD9 count top. And the TD9 count top here would suggest if there is a close above 44.19.50, we're at 44.19.75, or one tick above that. If we close above 44.19.50, then that pattern will have failed, and that suggests higher price. In the case of the Dow Equity Future contract, it has a TD9 count top. A close above, on a 30-minute basis, a close above 34.602. Uh, is going to negate that pattern and suggest higher price. And the Russell 2000, uh, if price is able to close above 2039.90, that'll negate that signal and tell us that we are likely headed to higher ground. There is no TD9 count for the NQ. There is a sell the D point, and that was negated. That was negated as we were coming into that 830 session. So two minutes, you're not seeing it. Oh, son of a gun. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. I occasionally uh, screw up. Not occasionally. I, I tend to do that more often than not. Now you've got those 30-minute charts. Thank you, Dan. I appreciate it. So here you've got, the, you can see the TD9 counts. You've got the numbers. Hopefully you wrote those down for the ES, the Dow Equity Future Contract, and the Russell. But here there was an A to B equals CD to the upside. That was confirmed with this bear sash candle. Price pulls back, tests that green oscillator and change line. It negates that pattern. So this suggests that it wants higher price. But the fact that it says it wants higher price, we ourselves always have to understand where are the battlegrounds, right? you got to know where your defense is at. Where is it that the offense is trying to plow through? Well, in the case of the NQ. It's a 14 489.50. So price really needs to close above that two consecutive bars to then suggest to move up to the 14,750 level. And that would be its next area where there would be a, a battle. But we've got a caller on the line. Let's go out to Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks for calling. Thanks for joining us so early this morning. How are you? I'm doing well, Steve. How are you? Excellent. Thank you very much for asking. And I believe you were calling about the uh, VIX uh, this morning. How can I best help you there? Yeah, I just wanted to explore the possibility that, uh, well, just, yeah, the VIX is the first thing I wanted to look at, and I just wanted to tie that into some other sure. possibilities. So, okay. Um, I think there's the potential because it is elevated, and it looks like we're going to have a decent rally. Of course, we have no idea what the day is going to end like, but yes, it seems like there is the potential for it to have that greater than 10% uh, rate of change today if that were to happen. That kind of adds to the potential. I guess what I'm getting at is they're, you know, trying to figure out is this, you know, some kind of a bottom that's going to last here? That it's, you know, we made a pretty major bottom. Is this just going to be some kind of counter trend bounce? That's what I'm trying to put some pieces together and just get your thoughts on that. And I know you're kind of exploring that right now with the shorter term charts and trying to put that together. And, you know, there's levels I know once we have this kind of damage. Yes. We're going to have a lot of levels we have to get through to kind of make that all happen. But I just want to get your thoughts on, on that in general. Sure. Well, so the, the first uh, so so with, let's take a look at the spot volatility index. And uh, so what Brent was referring to is if the spot volatility index declines uh, by more than 10 percent, a one day rate of change uh, below 10 percent, below minus 10 percent, that is out here, because that's what we'd be looking at. Uh, then what that typically signals, folks, is one of these green arrows on the chart here. And that's an initial. Oh, you're not looking at the chart. Man, 
Sorry, I, I guess the uh, I guess I had a really rough night. I don't think I did, but apparently I did. So now we're back to that screen. So here we got the uh, screen out here, folks. It's decorated. The bottom panel is showing you one-day rates of change when they're above plus 10% and when they're below minus 10%. I can't tell you why it works. I just know that it does work, and so we pay attention to it. And typically, those one-day rates of change below minus 10% generate an initiation signal. The last one that we had out here, Brent, was after a decline. That was a small decline into December 20th. And then on the uh, trading day of December 20th, second you got that initiation signal price moves higher there was another decline that we were experiencing back in the early part of december we got two initiation signals one was i believe on the trading day of uh december 2nd and then two day two trading days later both those led to higher price out there so you can see these green arrows typically do lead to higher price and so very good point there brent at the end of the day everybody should be looking to see what that one day rate of change is in the spot volatility index. so any questions about this chart before i switch over to something else no, thanks, Steve. That was uh, helpful. Perfect. Okay. So the issue here, and Brent, is this just a counter-trend rally? Is this a bottom that's going to move us higher out there? Um, and so I, I will say I, when I'm confused, I will tell you when I'm confused. And right now I'm slightly confused out here. And it's because of the width of this uh, Dow market profile. The fact that it's bullish in structure and the price closes above it, I know what that typically means out there. So there is uh, a weight of evidence inside the Dow that suggests that we could see a fairly large, a very large rally. If we get back to 36018 or the 36054-ish area out there, uh, people are going to think, boy, that was just, and it, and, and we're coming, we're, we're, we're right now, we're in the zone of uh, when we would see a seasonal bottom the end of January bottom. I believe that today is the uh, 26th. To me, that's kind of the end of January. You know, so that's a possibility out there, most certainly. So what else can we look at to really try to help us understand what's going on inside these markets? And it's really the weekly timeframes. So when we take a look at these four charts out here. What we do know is that last week, the ES mini the NASDAQ, they generated change in trend signals, intermediate term five time frame change in trend signals. And the only way that those signals get negated is a close back above the bottom of those monthly profiles. So those are other areas that we need to watch. If in fact, at come week is come week's end, the NQ closed above 14804, well then that will have been a false breakdown down message. The ES, if it closed above 4549, that will have been a false breakdown message out here. The Dow right now is already trading slightly above the uh, bottom of its weekly profile. So that number there to be watching is 34,435. Let's say that the let's say that the markets don't close above these. And in fact, the Dow closes back below the 34,570 level this week. Then, Brent, what I would be saying is, no, I think we have a change in trend and we look for markets to move lower. So any questions about this set of charts? No, I think that makes sense. I know you normally have the two bar rule, so you know yeah. because it was below one week doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be. If, you know, if that changes this week, well, then exactly. that was like you said, kind of a false breakdown. So that that is helpful. Thanks. Yeah, and exactly. And come Friday, you know, because it really doesn't matter what it's like at Wednesday at eight thirty eight in the morning. But come Friday, if in fact the uh, Dow Equity Future contract is able to close about thirty four four thirty five, it just adds another piece of that information for you and I that it may make a run all the way up to that uh, thirty six thousand level, the top of the uh, profile. So Brent, uh, we're going to a break here. Uh, feel free to hold on if you will. There's one other chart that we'll take a look at uh, that's inside the advanced, and then we're going to look at the advanced client oscillator for the New York. Stock Exchange and kind of get a feel for what its message might be for you and I. See Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, we're taking a look at the New York Stock Exchange, and uh, that's at the top portion of the chart. Brent, at the center is the advanced decline oscillator. Again, that is the difference between the 19 and 39 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line. Now, when that oscillator gets down to minus 150, that gets into an oversold range. When it gets down below minus 250, it gets into the extreme oversold reading. Now, the last time that we were down here, Brent, was on the trading day of December 1st. And that's where my cursor is at. Now, at that stage, what we saw is we saw price take off from there. Um, and I'm looking at the top portion of the chart. And uh, what? so this is this is very subtle, what we're looking at. If we take a look at yesterday's action, we can see that the advanced decline oscillator formed a bottom, at least at this stage here, and moved higher. But in the New York Stock Exchange, price moved lower. So we have a little bit of a divergent pattern that is forming there. The reason I bring that up is the better bottoms that form with this tool or this indicator are the ones that form back here. This is on the trading uh, time period of uh, the end of January of 2021. Interesting. Typical seasonal cycle out there. Um, and uh, and if we take a look and I go back a little bit further here, the way that the bottom was formed back in March of 2020. So if we come back here where my cursor is at, we can see that it, was, it wasn't until we formed a larger um, – uh, divergent pattern with the advanced decline oscillator making higher lows with price making lower lows. So I think that this is more likely right now, at least as of last night's close, Brent, this is more likely the type of bottom that we would see with this indicator. So even if we get a bounce out of here, right now this is suggesting to me that we're going to go and we're going to take out the lows that we saw this week out here. Now, I don't know when that is, uh, but that right now is the pat. Those are the patterns that I'm seeing as they're coming together. D any questions about this or what I reviewed here? No, that's great, Steve. Thank you. <laughs> Excuse yeah. me. Yeah, no, no problem. So, you know, that's that's what we're looking at, at at this stage here. Now, what I can share with folks is that let me see if I can find this page here. Now, this one's going to see you're going to see a lot of numbers as soon as I can find it. Where did I put it? Um right here, rates of change. So now there's gonna be lots of data. This takes a lot of time, uh, not a lot of time, it takes several minutes here for it to completely update. But Brent, this is a set, this is a table that looks at 
all the major indices in the upper left-hand corner, sectors inside the S&P 500 right below that. Then I take a look at debt instruments out there. Then below that, I've got currency pairs. Then we move over to the right-hand side here. We've got really all of the international ETFs. These are things that people can follow out here for countries around the globe. Then we take a look at uh, metal, uh, um, oil, natural gas commodities out there, then other commodities below that. What I'm looking for, what and this then 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 I've got the rates of change. So I'm going to go from right to left. The very right hand side says 2022 year. So that is what's taken place so far this year. Then next to that it says rate of change. It's got Y next to it year. That means it's I'm looking at the last 12 consecutive months to look at the rate of change. Then I've got the rate of change. It says W4. So I'm trying to get a monthly feel, but I'm looking at the last four weeks worth of data. Then I've got a weekly chart. It says rate of change D. That's daily, but I'm using five days to come up with a week out here. And then I've got the daily. Now what I'm looking for here, what I've been looking for during this decline for any of these time periods is where is capital flowing to? We know where capital is coming out, but where is capital flowing to? And Brent, I could not find anything. I mean, I see we've got some commodities that have moved a little bit higher out there, but I think that's more supply demand uh, and inflation uh, stuff versus a concentration of capital, so to speak, out here. So my point is there is no concentration of capital here in the U.S. If there was a concentration of capital inside the U.S. or maybe some of the sectors inside the U.S., I, I would say, yeah, this could very well be a, 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 a significant bottom the type that we would typically see in January. It still may be that. Stevie may be overthinking it, but what this is really telling me or what I believe that this is telling me is what we've seen here is a liquidation event. And what I don't know is and a liquidation event out here is likely coming from sovereign governments, not some type of hedge fund that is blown up. And if this is a liquidation event, and this goes back to the question that uh, John Z and the Tigers then asked yesterday, could this just be a rip your face off rally in a bear market? And uh, my answer to him was yes. And part of the reason why the answer to him was yes on that was because I think this is a liquidation event and I don't know that it's over. But uh, we will probably have a pretty decent feel for that by the end of the day. So that's a ton of information to throw upon you. Um, but any questions about uh, this gobbledygook? <laughs> no, I do appreciate it, Steve. I, I just, it is interesting that we happen to be in that time of year where, you know, your seasonal chart would you know, indicate this would be potentially an area for a bottom. So, I mean, there's some things. It's, you know, there's, you could look at both sides of the equation. There's, there's things that, you know, you could definitely point out that could indicate it could go further. There's also things that, you know, could potentially show, a, you know, this is a bottom that's going to last. So we'll find out, I guess, is that days progress. And at the end of this week will be kind of, you know, important to see where we end up. If we're above those levels, you know, the, the, the past yes. levels, you know, on the weekly, that'll make a difference. I guess we'll find out. Yes, absolutely. And and we'll also have some pretty good information come Monday or really Tuesday because Monday is the end of the month. And so the question will be what patterns, you know, have formed on a monthly basis out there. And I believe my recollection is the pattern that is forming on the Dow, but we'll really need to know on Monday is the type of signal that has been present before the beginning of every bear market. Now, that does not mean that every one of those signals produces a bear market. It just means that when that signal is present, um, and we start breaking through key levels of support. So in the case of the Dow, that's going to be the bottom of that weekly profile level. That's at 34, 435. If that present is pattern, um, it really, uh, what it does, it reinforces my original idea, which was late last year, that uh, we could see a market that moves lower for several years out here, at least a couple of months, but certainly uh, maybe a much longer time period than that. So, Brent, I hope that helps you out. Always good to speak to you. I uh, hope I didn't confuse you with anything, but I think we just have to take this stuff uh, objectively, which is uh, use these numbers and let these numbers communicate to us what the intent of the market is. So th those are my thoughts. No, I really appreciate you taking all the time to, to go over each one of those and it's been a great market for day trading. It's been, you know, really starting from, you know, start of the week Monday was a really good day. And I've just been, I've been more on the bullish side is waiting for these, you know, bottoms to form. And then I haven't doing, been doing much the other direction, but it's been fruitful. And I'm just going to keep, you know, trying to do that throughout the week. And uh, thanks so much for your help. And as always, and just have a great day. Okay. 
You bet. Thanks for calling, uh, Brent, and uh, much appreciated. And obviously, uh, folks, if uh, Brent's got questions, uh, you know, you probably have those same types of questions. And as I said, today's show has pretty much been dedicated to trying to look for clues. You know, what are the markets communicating uh, to you and I? But we do have a question that's come in, and this one is from uh, Nicholas, Nicholas A. And Nick wants to take a look at the SMHs out here. So let's fire up the black background chart. So what I'll do is uh, I'm going to, if you give me just a moment here, I want to get this fired up on my white background chart as well. Well, so the SMHs. And Nick's question is, uh, could you go over the SMHs? Uh, absolutely. So as we take a look at the SMHs, it looks like they also have formed a, not really a buy the D point bottom. There's no A to B equals CD that I see out here in the daily time frame. What I do see, though, is a consolidation. And so it looks like it has completed that measured move. It looks like greater than the measured move, or, or maybe. So here's your consolidation. I'm just simply going to take that pattern. I'm going to move this to the uh, bottom out here. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, it, for the most part, it is completed. Uh, the SMH is that is. It's consolidation move, and it generated that little bull sash candle, bullish engulfing candle, um, on December, on January 24th out there. So we come back from this breakout here. Let's go take my white background charge for the SMHs and uh, help out Nicholas. Hey, Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back. Uh, so, Nick, what we're going to do here is we're going to start from larger time frame. 
and go back to the smaller time frames and the larger time frame being the yearly. And so when we take a look at the SMHs, they reflect what we've seen in the majority of the U.S. indices out here. And that is on a yearly basis, we have a TD9 count top. Remember, the high of the pattern on a TD9 count pattern needs to form on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. In this case here was the bar following nine. So that says, okay, prepare for a top. It was the reason why, uh, and when I ran the annual charts, the yearly charts back in probably December, November, December, I was like, oh man, this is interesting. Now, if we take a look at the monthly time frame chart, right? If you got a top on a yearly, then what you like to see is some type of top on a monthly chart. You know, you kind of go down. I mean, I guess you could go quarterly, but I don't have the quarterly charts here. So we're going to go from yearly to monthly. In the case of the monthly, it too has a TD9 count top. This is the SMH that we're looking at. And it appears that it will go ahead and confirm a three river evening star pattern, confirming a Rhodes momentum indicator top. Now, what price has done is pulled right back to support 264.33, the top of its monthly profile. Um, but this is going to suggest to you and I, so that first level of support is held, but the pattern is not likely to change here between now and Monday. It could, but it looks like you've got a confirmed top on the monthly, two confirmed tops on the monthly. This would suggest to me, Nicholas, that over time, we'd likely see price get down to the 216.14 level. The weekly chart has a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator top. Price is below the bottom of that weekly bullish structure profile. Looks like this will be week number two below that. That suggests over time we'll move back to 170.46 on the weekly time frame. And the daily chart out here, it has a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator top. But on the daily, what you and I noticed was it also completed that uh, consolidation measured move, does it with a bullish engulfing candle, which was also pulling back to its first breakout level, which held out here until yesterday. And that was at the 270.03 area. So price could be targeting 257.03 to the downside. Um, so that's what I see when I take a look at the SMHs, folks. Uh, the, again, this morning's show and obviously this afternoon, between which is being replayed between 1 and 2, is all about trying to look for clues. And right now, the clues are suggesting we should see markets trade higher, regardless of what the Fed says. We'll know more in the morning. Join me at 8 o'clock tomorrow, please. And have a wonderful Wednesday. We'll see you on Terrific Thursday, folks. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think 